this video, we will see how to operate and approach a patient who is post-RK for cataract surgery. First of all, actually, let's analyze how does the cornea normally appear. There's a proper contour of the anterior posterior curvature in a normal cornea, whereas this contour is lost because of just anterior flattening and lasik. Whereas post-RK, the flattening is generalized, both the anterior and posterior surfaces are flattened. This makes the ease of estimation, especially in post-RK cases. But one big issue with posterior RK cases is that there is a irregular astigmatism which can be very difficult to treat. Also, the possibility of cornea tear during the cataract surgery and stability of refraction even after cataract surgery may take two to three months. Now, normally the steepening of cornea is not regular in post-RK and it may suddenly change from the center to the periphery. In post-RK cases, one more thing we have to say is that the estimation of keratometry and IOL calculation will be slightly easier in LASIK in some cases, but the gaping of deep wounds and deep corneal cuts may open during surgery. We also personally don't recommend use of multifocal lenses in post-RK cases who are taken off for cataract surgery. You can take some patients for EDOF lenses, especially if the cuts are smaller in number. Anything between four to six cuts, maybe you can take these patients for EDOF. And use of toric lenses is strongly recommended only when there is a regular astigmatism. These are a few cases where there was a corneal gape post cataract surgery operated by other surgeons who did not follow standard set protocol. Now we proceed in this particular case by doing the incision. We make an L-shaped cut in the conjunctival flap just to ensure a very, very adequate closure. You will notice at the end of the surgery how this L-shaped flap on the conjunctiva helps us. Another point to be noted is that we do not do aggressive cauterization of the sclera, especially the peripheral sclera, because excessive cauterization of the sclera may cause thinning and necrosis of the sclera with exposure of the uvea and may cause problems later on. So the gentle cauterization using approximately 20 to 30 power of your cautery machine is sometimes enough to do the Pottery, an exposure of approximately anything between 3 to 4 millimeters of the scleral surface is good enough. Then we proceed to mark the incisional plane on the cornea, but before that, we have to make the globe slightly tighter. So, how do we do that? We instill small amount of viscoelastic into the anterior chamber to make the globe a little tight so that we have more predictable or more predictable and controlled incisions. You will see that I've done a meticulous uh, cauterization. Now, you find a space between any two cuts which gives you enough space, approximately 1.5 meters. Now, you put your MVR blade right in the center, but be always very cautious not to have a complete entry and leave at least 500 microns to half millimeter on either side of the side pore. Then you instill small amount of viscoelastic also remembering not to over inflate the chamber because over pressurization of the chamber may cause the cuts to open. Then approximately 750 microns or 0.75 millimeters from the limbus create a linear cut into the sclera which is approximately 60 to 70 percent of the depth. You will notice there is still slight hypotony. So before you create the scleral tunnel, it's a good idea to pressurize and make the globe tight because this gives you a much controlled, linear and a good plane of the sclerotic tunnel. Now we proceed by creating a linear cut into the sclera, which will be aimed to enter into the cornea between two cuts. That's the most preferable situation. Make sure that the side to side movements is not done lifting the cornea because this may also cause the tear in the cornea. Once this is done, another maneuver to note is that before you enter with the 2.8 keratome in the same plane, do side to side movements. This ensures that you're entering the same plane which your crescent blade made. Now we have a clean entry into the anterior chamber. You will notice that the scleral tunnel is very, very beautifully created, a linear scleral tunnel which is going straight into the cornea. Now we inject viscoelastic, make sure there's a good, adequate distension of the anterior chamber, making sure not to overpressurize. Now again, the entry of the cystotome is done in a lying down manner because this may cause decimal detachment if you 
don't do this particular maneuver we proceed to do a capsular excess which is approximately 5 to 5.5 mm and then we do the hydro dissection now all the entries into the interior chamber are to be done while dipping the scleral lip because this maneuver ensures that the desmen chances of desmen detachment are minimized having entered inside the interior chamber we do a rotation loosening of the cortical and the epinuclear plate now this you can notice is not a very hard cataract it's a very soft cataract we proceed now before we enter the interior chamber we instill viscoelastic to distend the interior chamber and also coat the tunnel of the sclera with viscoelastic this ensures a smooth entry of the phaco tip and sleeve else sometimes we may cause desmens detachment as discussed earlier once we are inside the interior chamber we proceed to remove the cortical plate and the cortical fibers on top of the nucleus you will notice since this is a patient who has a high myop there is a depth uh, increased depth of the interior chamber the interior chamber is very deep and the cataract being soft even with the use of a small amount of phaco power uh, we are able to get uh, chop the cataract into two places this is a sticky soft cataract it actually refuses to be brought into the interior chamber easily and since i don't want to do much rotational movements of my phaco tape into the wound because they may cause increase of the chances of the corneal cuts gaping or tear in the cornea so most of the maneuvers while doing phaco will be concentrated only in the forward and backward movement of my phaco tip so i use the side port usually to rotate the d segment now since it's a soft cataract again the restricted movement of my phaco tip into the main wound is to be noted and kept in mind much lateral movements or exaggerated lateral movements of the phaco tip within the wound scleral wound are to be avoided because they may precipitate tearing of the cornea the reason why we do a scleral tunnel in these cases when the cuts are more than 10 is that the the tissue of the sclera gives a support to the cornea and the chances of corneal tear are reduced here you notice that the cataract is removed now before we exit we come out slowly with the fluid on so that there's no sudden shallowing of the interior chamber because these cases may have increased chances of having corneal detachment begin high myopsis we will fast forward the irrigation aspiration part of this particular surgical video as you notice that we have removed the cortical fibers on either side there is slight amount of uh, plaque in the center of the A capsule, which we will polish once the whole cortical removal has been done. The cortical fibers are totally, nearly cleaned up. Now we will proceed, and we will notice that I am cleaning up the capsule. The last bit of the cortical fibers have been removed, and as we exit out, you can see a small amount of nick. or small amount of plaque in the center which i will use my hydrojetting technique to polish once this is done you will notice that they have a completely clear posterior capsule and a round capsular excess instilling viscoelastic again making sure we do not overfill the viscoelastic interior chamber because this may cause our corneal wounds to uh, open up post rk corneal wounds now once the eye oil is inserted inside the eye now we always try and place the iol haptic haptic junction at 30 degree on the temporal side because in my opinion i have noticed it to reduce negative dysphotopsia especially in patients who have very very deep anterior chambers and this patient is a high myop so i tend to place the haptic haptic junction of the iol 30 degrees level so that the part of haptic optic junction stops the light rays entering from the temporal side into the eye now we clean the posterior capsule eye is perfectly centered now proceed to now see the advantage of creating an l shaped 
Kanyang Tavel opening, which will now make sealing of the Kanyang Tavel flaps very, very easy. You will notice I will not hydrate the wounds in this particular case. Even if you do, do it very gently. Injecting fluid into the cornea to seal the wound, hydration may again cause the RK cuts to open up. Now we have a decent amount of intraocular pressure. Now you will notice we dry the scleral bed. The apposition of the angle of the L incision is the place where we now do cautery. Before we do cautery, we just hold this L-shaped angle of the conjunctiva, hold two edges together, dry it, use just 25% of cautery, slight amount of cauterization, not a heavy cauterization, and there you will see the conjunctiva has totally fused. You will not need any sutures here. Another good tip is, now if you have to inject any subconjunctival injection, subcon injection, give this injection away from the site of the main scleral wound at your conjunctival cautery because sometimes this injection stretching caused by the injection or the fluid may cause the conjunctival flap to, uh, to open up and also some intracameral leakage of the medication. There the surgery is over. I would like you to comment on the surgery. Please do subscribe to the channel. It always encourages me to make more videos. Thank you.